Hello, peace be upon you, Islamic greetings, Salamu alaikum, from a former Christian who embraced Islam by the grace of Almighty Allah, the God of Abraham. Were there any eyewitnesses at the alleged crucifixion of Jesus? When Jesus was allegedly arrested, all his disciples abandoned him, according to the Bible, quote, and they all left him and fled, Mark chapter 14, verse 50, see also Matthew chapter 26, verse 56. When Jesus was being taken away, a young man followed him, perhaps a disciple. He was seized, but he managed to escape and, quote, ran off naked, end quote. Mark 14, verse 52. Quote, Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard, end quote. Mark 14, 54. Peter therefore seems to have gotten the closest to seeing Jesus, but actually Peter had only gotten as close as the area outside the building where the assembly of the Sanhedrin was questioning Jesus. The high priest's courtyard was where the guards were warming themselves at a fire, verse 54. Also, very interestingly, in verse, 50, in verse 66, it states, quote, while Peter was below in the courtyard, end quote. This shows Peter was located somewhere different from where Jesus was taken for questioning, and that means Peter could not have been a reliable eyewitness to Jesus' questioning, let alone his crucifixion, which was heavily guarded. In Mark's Gospel, the only person supposedly facing Jesus while he is allegedly on the cross is a Roman pagan centurion, Mark 15.39. This is someone who never even knew Jesus before, and wouldn't be able to positively identify him, nor match him to any previous description. Therefore, the Roman centurion couldn't be used as a valid and reliable eyewitness to Jesus' alleged crucifixion. As for Jesus' dis disciples, there is no mention of them except for a few women disciples, among them was Mary Magdalene. During the crucifixion, these followers were, quote, looking on from a distance, end quote, Mark 15, 40. Therefore, nobody can assume that they could positively identify Jesus on the cross. You would have to be near Jesus to be an eyewitness, not far away, as this verse tells us they were. In Matthew 26, Jesus is arrested and taken to an assembly of the high priest, verse 57. Peter follows, quote, at a distance, end quote, and gets only as near as the servants who are outside the assembly in the courtyard in verse 58. Quote, Peter was sitting outside in the, in the courtyard, end quote, that's verse 69. Peter goes on to deny Jesus three times, even to the point of cursing and swearing in verse 74. Again, when it's time for the crucifixion of Jesus, the only eyewitnesses are a centurion and some guards keeping watch over Jesus. Again, these are not followers of Jesus. They did not know him before and can't be used as reliable eyewitnesses. Once again, it's some women disciples who were watching the event, but only, quote, looking on from a distance, end quote, Matthew 27, 55. Among them is Mary Magdalene in verse 56. In Luke, it's much the same. Peter follows, quote, at a distance, end quote. Luke 22, 54. Peter actually ends up leaving the courtyard after denying Jesus three times, and no mention is made of him returning back in verse 62. Luke 23, 35 mentions some people standing by watching the crucifixion, but there is no mention of Jesus' disciples. It is only some rulers and soldiers and perhaps some family members of the two criminals crucified allegedly on, alongside Jesus. Like Mark and Matthew, the eyewitnesses of the crucifixion is the eyewitness of, a cru of the crucifixion is a pagan Roman centurion who cannot be verified as an authentic eyewitness because there is no mention of him knowing Jesus before. Verse 47. In verse 48, the people mentioned in verse 35 leave and return home. The only mention the only mention of any possible disciples is in the next verse. They are. There are some of Jesus' acquaintances and women followers, but again, unfortunately, all of these people, quote, stood at a distance, end quote. Luke 23, 49. The only real eyewitnesses of, to the crucifixion among Jesus' followers are found in the later Gospel of John. It says Jesus' female disciples were, quote, standing by the cross of Jesus, end quote. They even include Mary of Magdalene, John 19:25. As we have already seen in Matthew and Mark's Gospel, Mary Magdalene, or Mary of Magdala, as she is also called, was nowhere near the cross at all, 
but she was one of those women who were looking at the crucifixion from afar, or, quote, at a distance, end quote. John's Gospel even claims in verse 27 that the disciple that Jesus loved, perhaps John, was, not the, was near the cross, in fact, and an example, uh, sorry, this, this is an important fact, actually, totally ignored by the other Gospels. This claim by John's Gospel totally contradicts all the other accounts in the earlier Gospels. How can John's Gospel say Mary of Magdala was, quote, standing by the cross, end quote, near Jesus, while at the same time and during the same event, the earlier Gospels of Mark and Matthew, she was looking at the cross, quote, from a distance, end quote. The corruption of the Gospel of John is evident. Therefore, we are forced to reject John's account in favor of the majority view in the earlier Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, that there were no eyewitnesses to the alleged crucifixion of Jesus. Peter later claims to be an eyewitness elsewhere in Acts uh, chapter 2, verse 32, but this claim is rejected because it's not supported by any of the four Gospels. Besides, Peter did not write the, books, the book of Acts anyway. Luke did. So again, Almighty God has told us in the Holy Quran, Jesus was not killed, but it seemed to those who thought that he was killed. And no wonder, the Bible even supports that and says, the eyewitnesses were looking on from a distance, which means not near. Praise be to Allah for giving us the truth in the Quran.